How's it going guys and welcome to a video that I've been wanting to make for quite some time now. I started taking photos and making videos and stuff about two years or so ago when I bought my first uh, DSLR camera body, a Nikon D3200, uh, D3200 sorry, and uh, when I first got this I was introduced to the whole, because like before I had this I had no idea about cameras and stuff, but when I got it I was introduced to the whole idea of having to buy different sort of lenses to get different sort of photos and stuff uh, which also led me to the realization that camera lens body uh, camera lenses rather are not cheap in fact they are quite expensive so i decided a little while ago that i wanted to find a cheap lens cheap second hand lens on ebay uh, and i did actually i recently bought this uh, Takina or yeah Takina i'd say it is uh, f2.8 to 4.5 28 to 70 millimeter for the Nikon it also says autofocus but um, I don't think the autofocus works with this I think it only works with uh, cameras that are full-size sensors that sort of thing that they can autofocus with it actually says for an f801 but I believe it should work with this camera so yeah this was 20 pounds and to be fair all my lenses that I bought brand new and stuff did not come in a case this fancy and this nice or like an actual sort of hard case they all come in like little bags but yeah basically I wanted to make a video to see what you can get with this because I don't think it should have to be if you're just starting out and stuff you shouldn't have to go out and buy these like couple hundred pound lenses to be able to take photos uh, so I wanted to see if you could actually do something decent with one of these so I haven't actually properly had a go with this yet I put it on my camera to make sure it was like not faulty or anything when I got it other than that, I haven't done anything. It's looking really nice inside. Like I've never had a case sort of this nice. So here it is. I'll uh, I'll show you guys. So I am going to be taking the photos using this D3200 that I was talking about earlier for two main reasons. One being that if you have got an older camera body, you are more likely to be wanting to buy the cheaper lenses. So if you're just starting out, you've probably got an old camera body like this, not like the D5600 that I'm currently recording with. And that also brings me on to my second point, and that is the fact that I'm using my D5600 to record this video, so I can't actually use it to take the photos. So my plan is I'm going to put the camera lens on this body, take some photos maybe in here to see what best results we can get with the whole artificial light and stuff and then go outside, uh, I live on a farm so we'll go around the farm, maybe find a couple of animals depending on how quickly I can focus it because like I said I don't think the autofocus works with this um, and take some other photos of some other things. But yeah it should be, should be quite interesting so let's take some photos of something on here. Right so guys I've got the lens on the body and I have just noticed and I'll, I'll show you guys this straight away it does say here I don't know if you guys can see that very well but it says uh, lock lens aperturing and minimum aperture. I'm not 100% sure why but as I was showing you on the lens before there is an actual you can actually change the aperture manually um, and there's a little lock, lock switch at the side for some unknown reason, I have no idea why, but you have to lock it at the, what did it say, at the lowest? Yeah, at the lowest value, which is 22 on this, and it automatically changes the aperture, which is pretty cool because I'm not having to mess around changing it, but it also means that I can't mess around and change it manually if I wanted to. I'm not sure why, it just seems to be how it is. Also, another thing I quickly want to say is, when I'm taking the photos, once I've taken a photo, I will put up one on one side of the screen and another one next to it. One will be the raw JPEG, I'll make sure you guys know which one that is. And the other will be, because I'm shooting raw, it'll be like an edited one of what I've managed to get out of it after I've edited it. So yeah, let's take a photo of something. I've been looking around my room and I think one of these little dogs would be one of the best things to do with the lowest temperature we can kind of get with it. So let's see what we can do with this. 
Okay, just straight away, it's something I'm noticing that's weird is if I go to 28 millimeters, I can go to two f 2.8, but if I'm up at like 50 millimeters, for example, or 70 millimeters, it's only at 40 uh, 4.5. The f stops at 4.5, so I'm not really sure why. It must be something to do with the mechanics of it, but that's just kind of how it is. Anyway. So this lens has a macro feature which is probably best for this indoor light thing to see how good of a photo we can get. It's funny because when I started photography I did a lot of um, manual focusing for some reason I thought that made me a better photographer which was absolutely ridiculous now if I shoot auto focus but it is nice to go back to the, the manual focusing. So here is the photo side by side. I have no idea what these are going to turn out like, so you guys will have to be the judge. Uh, that's probably the best we're going to get from this. Maybe just one more from the side. It's really quite hard to... There we go. The macro seems really good. The macro seems really good, um, and the bokeh actually seems pretty good to be fair, but like I say, I say, you can't really tell from these screens. I think the best thing for us to do is to go outside where I can extend it to sort of 28 millimeters and stuff and see what we can get. So I think that's one of us will tell. Also just a quick fact, uh, or qu a quick point rather, do you remember this is a crop frame, frame sensor, so if you did buy a full frame, uh, or if you do have a full frame camera, it would definitely turn out differently. It'd probably be work a little bit better, but I have no idea, it could go either way. Anyway, I'm gonna get myself outside and we'll go see what we can shoot. So I think I am better off taking photos of things that aren't moving, especially for now whilst I'm still getting used to the lens uh, with the whole manual focus thing. So I thought I'd take a photo of the tractor, see what I can get. I'm quite hopeful at the minute because it is quite nice and sunny. I'm just hoping that there aren't too, there isn't too much like colour fragment or whatnot uh, on this lens, but I suppose we'll find out. Seems to seems to be able to handle stuff pretty well. Like it looks, it looks pretty good on here, but a lot of photos do, and then they aren't. It's also really quite hard to tell uh, whether you're in focus or not. I don't know whether that's just because I'm outside or what. I hope it isn't too windy for you guys, but we'll go find some other locations. With the pot dog being black and the table being brown and stuff, there wasn't much colour, so I am quite interested to see how the green and the blue and stuff of the sky and the field will, will look. So, will look. I'm hoping that they'll come out quite nice. If they do, this might actually be the lens that I take with me uh, just to get scout things out. So I just took some photos in here in the cow shed. Unfortunately though, I forgot to click record and it's probably for the best anyway because I had the camera set down there and the wind was terrible. Um, but yeah, these are the photos that I took. I think some of them should have come out all right. They seem pretty good. Um, and I also managed to get a photo of the dog, which is hopefully, hopefully pretty good. Um, I would say, if you have a little bit of spare money and you're able to buy like a cheap lens like this, a £20 lens, it isn't like cheap, cheap, don't get me wrong, but it's cheaper than brand new lenses. Um, but it, it's very much worth doing because it's so challenging and it's so enjoyable. Like I have no idea if these photos are going to turn out any good or if they're going to be awful. Um, but it just means I'm having to take photos in a bit of a different way. And uh, I like having to do that. It's quite nice having to... Um, not so much struggle but having to operate differently to how you normally do it makes it a little bit more interesting and uh, like I say it's nice not knowing whether the photos are going to be good or not I mean obviously if you're doing like a proper photo shoot or something you want to know your photos are going to be good but if you're just messing around and stuff it's nice to know that your photos might not be that good so if you do find some good ones it's a little bit more exciting and I'm very much excited to find out if I've actually managed to do anything good with these so we will go and uh, move on to the next location now and hopefully those photos were alright. So I don't really know if you guys can see them because the sun's quite bright in my eyes but there is a bull and a couple of cars down here. I'm going to try and see if at 70mm I can uh, get something good because they're a good distance away from me uh, but we'll see. It's driving me crazy because in the actual 
in the actual viewfinder these photos are looking like spot on but whether they actually translate to that I don't really know but this cloth is is stood in an ideal place so it's a lot of uh, going back and forth on the uh, autofocus my brother's just taken off in the tractors hopefully you guys can still hear me uh, but yeah it's a lot of going back and forth on the viewfinder all land is just smashing up that shed which is fantastic uh, but I'm going to try and get a quick photo of him whilst he's smashing up that shed so hey great beast Why? Hey! Yeah, that's, this is what it's like to have a farm. It just means animals destroying things all the time. Especially in the name of a good scratch. Anyway, so I wanted to try some macro outside uh, and find a really nice uh, plant to do. But as it's like the beginning of spring and the weather's been all over the place, there aren't many plants. Hey, Rag, I'm just about to step on what I wanted to take a photo of. Good boy. Um, when I found this little sprout, And it might just have been an okay photo. I'm trying to use that macro feature, um, but using it outside. Like I say, it's a very sunny day today, so there's a fair bit of light for this to work. I've just tried it in a shed that's a bit darker than out here. I uh, took some photos of some lambs here, the photos. But whether they turned out very well, I don't really know. Also, I forgot to click record again. It's an absolute nightmare. I'm not used to recording with my camera on a tripod. Tripod. I'm usually uh, vlogging, so I've normally got my camera right here, and I can see the screen, and I can see that it's recording. Whereas at the minute, it might not even be recording again. I can't see because the sun's straight in my face. But I'm learning, so that's something. Anyway, I think it's about time we go inside, have a look what these photos turned out like, and uh, decide what the verdict is on a £20 lens off eBay. So guys, this is the end of the video. I've actually got the lens on my D5600 now, just so that you can uh, see what the video quality is like. I have a feeling it isn't autofocus and I've got a yellow box around my face, which I assume means it knows my face is there, but it can't focus on it. Um, but in general, like I've had a look through a couple of the photos that I took and I'm pretty impressed with it. For the fact that I've paid £20 off the eBay second hand for it, uh, the actual photo quality I've got, I'm I'm pretty happy with. I think it proves uh, to a degree that you don't have to spend a lot of money on lenses. If you're starting out uh, and you've only got like a a, a basic uh, crop frame DSLR and you can't afford these big 200, 300, 400, 500 pound lenses, I think it is definitely worth going on eBay and seeing what you can find for as cheap as you can find it and just experimenting with things like that. And I think, to be honest with you, you become such a better photographer working like that because you have to work a lot harder with lenses like this. Today, taking the photos, like I was saying earlier, I had no idea whether they were going to turn out right or not, just because of the fact that they're not, they don't do everything for you. You've got to put a bit more effort, you've got to think about it a little bit more. Um, but that is, that's, you know, half the fun of it. So if you can afford to buy one of these lenses, uh, just to mess around with, I definitely recommend it. But also, if you're looking for a lens to buy, and you're thinking, I don't know whether to buy cheap lenses because of the fact that they're cheap, I want to buy the more expensive ones, but you're just starting out, I'd definitely recommend buying something like this. It's 28 to 70 millimeters, which is a very wide range, and uh, you know, that's pretty ideal. You've got your 50 millimeter that, normal pe uh, that people normally go for, you've got that in that range. Yeah, you don't have the 1.8 bokeh, but I mean, I think the photos show that it's pretty good anyway. My point being, if you can't really afford many lenses and stuff, buying cheap ones like this are very much worth it, I reckon. I think you can get a lot out of them uh, for what they are. So, that's the end of the video. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. I've definitely enjoyed making this one. Like I say, I've been wanting to make it for a while. Um, hopefully, I can do something similar in the future. I don't really know. If you've got any ideas, leave them in the comments below. And hopefully, I will see you in a future video. So, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you some other time.